Tour de France, stage 17, 2018, was a special stage, 64 k's, over 3,000 meters of climbing, and we're having a look here at Robert Gessing's power data on Strava. So I really dig it that Robert Gessing always puts his power data up, and I'd love to see power data from all the other Grand Tour contenders like Chris Froome, Nairo Quintana, Kieran Thomas, all the top guys, Tom Dumoulin, be awesome to see. But I guess that's just wishful thinking. It's not the kind of world that we're living. Those guys aren't going to put that shit on Strava. It's too classified, shall we say. Okay, so Rob Gessing's normalized power for the stage, 340 watts, which is what you can see here. Now, I use the Stravistics plugin because it gives you the correct normalized power. The weighted power is not always reliable, but with the Stravistics plugin, you're always going to get the right data as it would be with the normalized power algorithm. So 340 watts, it's absolutely huge. Robert Gessing's threshold power, as I've calculated from the last two months of training data, is 400 watts, or around 400 watts. So if we take 340 and we divide that by 400, we can get the intensity factor for the stage, which is 0 0.85. Now that's really impressive considering that he's already had 16 days of hardcore racing under his belt so to be able to put out intensity factor like that day after day just shows what level these guys are at that, that, that they can just take so much punishment and just keep going at a fucking high level so that's really impressive and we can see here that his average heart rate was only 133 so if we had to take a guess we could say that his max heart rate is about 190 BPM so if we take 133 and divide that by 190 we can see that his average heart rate is only at 70% so really low it just shows the level of fatigue that these guys are riding at when the heart rate is so low and um, 70% for a normal ride that would just be an endurance ride but on this after this much fatigue it's fucking full gas full gas racing Average power 312, so still incredibly high considering all the amounts of descending. And if we look at the pedaling time here, 2 hours 24 minutes, so 91% of the activity was actually pedaling. So it just goes to show that they really go fast on the downhill and the climbing is the majority of the stage, as you can imagine. Now here, if we have a look at the power data, so let's take the power data of the first climb. I'm going to just highlight the segments where there wasn't any coasting on the downhill so we can get the best data. And we can see here that it's 369 watts for over 30 minutes, 32 minutes. And if we take that in watts per kilos, what Robert Gessink weighs 70 kilos, so 369 divided by 70 gives us a value of 5.27 so we can round that up to 5.3 watts per kilo now let's take a look at the subsequent climbs so that's the second climb we'll highlight it here and we can see guessing good 370 watts for 25 minutes so that's again about 5.3 watts per kilo so very consistent here just keeps going and going doesn't fucking burn out and then on the final climb I reckon he was a bit gassed here but still holding it together quite well for the first half of the climb 337 watts so that's 4.8 just over 4.8 watts per kilo and then for the last part of the climb it looks like he was finished here he was probably doing the domestique role, but he probably also just ran out of energy because, I mean, 3,000 meters of climbing, day 17 of the Tour de France, it's hectic, it's crazy. You're going to run out of gas at some point because you're burning more calories than you can actually replenish. So 322 watts here for 33 minutes, still decent effort considering all that he's been through. 
322 divided by 70 4.6 watts per kilo so still respectable watts per kilo for these guys and it's just amazing what they can do day in and day out really incredible so in order to win the Tour de France you need to be able to hold 5.8 to 6 watts per kilo on these climbs day in and day out otherwise you're just going to get spat out the back and you're going to be a domestique but hey domestiques get paid well too so if you want to be a professional cyclist this is the level that you've got to ride at and you also got to list you also got to risk life and limb on the downhills so being a pro cyclist pretty much the hardest job on the planet i can't think of anything harder than this if you disagree give this video a dislike and if you agree give it a thumbs up ciao for now